Hey everybody, this is Russ from Retro Game Core. Today we're going to do something unique. We're going to talk about audio and review some speakers. These speakers right here are called the Aura speakers from a company called Canto. Now this company has been around for a while and they're known for making kind of audiophile level stuff. And these are really high quality and they're a little expensive as well, about $350 altogether. Now the thing that makes these unique for desktop speakers is that they are magnetically shielded. And that's a really unique feature nowadays. Back in the day, all computer speakers or desktop speakers were shielded. And that's because we used to have CRT monitors. Nowadays, everyone's got LCD monitors, so it's not really that big of a deal. But the thing about CRT tubes is that it can create buzzing with speakers if they're too close. These ones are magnetically shielded, which means they're going to work really well for CRT televisions, especially when you're doing retro gaming. So that's what we're going to focus on here today, is whether or not these speakers are going to be really good for a retro game setup. And before we even get into it, let me just say that, yeah, they are pretty awesome. I'm going to give you an audio sample here right now. Now, I wouldn't consider myself to be an audiophile. I definitely haven't gone off the deep end with that, but I have touched my toes in it a little bit. I've also been recording and writing music since the mid 90s, so I know my way around audio just a little bit. I think enough to be dangerous when it comes to this review here. Either way, what I want to do is kind of go through a series of different tests to show if these speakers are going to work and how they're going to sound and whether or not they might be a good fit for you if you are in the market to have some really high quality sound with your retro gaming. Anyway, I think this is going to be a lot of fun to do. And so without any further delay, let's go ahead and dive right in. Okay, as we get started, a quick disclaimer, Kanto has sent these over for review. But as always, I'm not getting paid in any way for making this video and all opinions are my own and they're not seeing it ahead of time. Now, like I mentioned in the intro, this company has been around for a while. It's been about 15 years at this point, and they do focus on more mid-range or high-end audio. Now, the Aura speakers we're reviewing today are their latest product. They're actually coming out today as of making this video. And I've had them for almost a month now, breaking in the speakers and then also giving them a fair test. Next, I want to talk a little bit about the most important specs. First, we have two different speakers or drivers. The one on top is called a tweeter and it's three quarters inch. And then the one below is called a woofer and it's three inches across. Now these are powered speakers, which means that they do not require amplifier. They have that already inside. And they do supply 100 watts of power between the two of them. In addition, these speakers are what they call bi-amplified. That means they will have individual amplifiers for four separate channels, left and right, as well as the tweeter and woofer. And this presents a lot of unique things when it comes to audio. Number one, it's using a DSP or digital signal processing to create what it calls crossover. And this is when the lower frequencies go into the bigger woofer on the bottom, and then the higher ones go into the tweeter. And in a nutshell, this is what's going to give your audio that clarity that you want, where you can hear both the high and the low end frequencies very easily. Additionally, these speakers have an automatic feature that if you plug in a subwoofer, it's actually going to create a high pass filter. This means that when you plug in a subwoofer, you will have all the low end audio going to that. And then the three inch woofer, which usually takes care of both mid range and bass, will only take care of the mid range. This is going to further separate those audio qualities and make it sound even clearer. Note that for all my testing, I didn't have a subwoofer, so we're just going to focus on the speakers themselves. Next, let's talk about inputs. So we have three different ways that you can actually get music to those speakers. Number one will be your RCA inputs. These are usually called like auxiliary or analog. It's the red and white plugs that you've probably seen on other speakers. And that's what we'll be using for things like retro game consoles. Now, in addition, these speakers can take a digital signal, both from USB-C, so you can plug it directly from a computer, and it also comes equipped with Bluetooth 5.0 if you want to transmit it over wirelessly. Bear in mind, of course, that the Bluetooth audio will probably be the worst in terms of quality, but the USB-C will be the best. And then, of course, the RCA inputs will give you that rich analog sound. Now, if you want to get really into the weeds about these speakers and all the properties that they contain, there's a really nice blog post on their website. I'll leave it linked down below. Here you can kind of scroll through and read about all the unique properties and how they may apply to your use case. Now, Kanto does not have a direct sales page. You have to buy these through a retailer. And as you can see, there's a variety of retailers, both in the US and Canada, which is where they are based out of. Now, as of making this video, not all of the listings are live just yet, but a couple already are, like B&H. Additionally, Kanto has a presence on Amazon, so I would expect to see these speakers on Amazon sometime in the future as well. And as soon as I see them pop up on Amazon, I'll go ahead and leave that link in the video description. Anyway, now that we have an idea of what these speakers are all about and what they can potentially do, let's do an unboxing and actually have a look. 
To start, we've got a little bit of paperwork, which will include an instruction manual. And then of course we have the speakers themselves. And of course we've got a small cardboard box filled with a bunch of goodies. Let's check these out. First off, we have the most exciting thing here, which is gonna be the power plug. As you can see, it uses a barrel plug and then a charging brick, which will then be connected to another power cable. So nothing really fancy there. And here's a look at the speaker cable. So this will be plugged into the one that's actually plugged into power, and then it'll provide both power and audio to the other speaker. Next, let's take a look at the speakers themselves. I wouldn't consider them to be super tiny. They're kind of like a mid-range desktop speaker. They're actually about seven inches in height altogether. Now looking at the front, you can see it's a very simple and clean design. We have our tweeter up top and then our woofer down here on the bottom. Now this is the left speaker, which means it doesn't have all of the plugs and hookups. It really just has the base reflex port and then a mounting hole if you want to mount it. And then of course our plug for that speaker cable. One thing of note, on the bottom there are no rubber feet and that is to accommodate a stand if you want to use it. But in the package that comes with all the paperwork, it does have rubber feet if you'd like to add them yourself. Now let's take a look at the right speaker. This is where all the magic happens. On the front, there's a couple things different. Number one, we have the volume knob. Of note, there's a little bit of clicky resistance with this knob, and it also will continuously spin. So it's not gonna ever max out, it will just kinda keep going. But I will say that it has a pretty satisfying feel to it when you spin it. And the volume knob will also press down. This is going to be your power and switching between the different audio options. But let's take a look at the back. To start, we've got our power plug in, and then also our other speaker cable port. Next, we have our audio inputs, including the RCA white and red, and then also our USB-C input port. To the left of that, we have our universal subwoofer port, if you want to add one of these. And we also have a Bluetooth pairing button if you plan on connecting this wirelessly. Overall, I really like the look and feel of these speakers and the fact that they are clean, but then also subdued. These are the type of speakers I feel would just kind of melt into your regular desktop aesthetics. Now, of course, you can put the speakers directly on your desktop, but they do offer a couple stands as well. And luckily, they sent over a couple for our demonstration purposes. We have both elevated speaker stands as well as desktop ones. The elevated ones would probably be better if you're going to be using them for reference audio, for example, if you're going to be mixing or mastering music. And these stands will cost you 40 bucks. The others are just going to be your typical desktop speakers, and they'll set you back 30 bucks. And we'll start by taking a look at the desktop ones. Now, number one, they have a bunch of rubber padding around each of the sides as well as on the bottom. This means that both your desktop as well as the speakers will be well padded, and so you're not going to get any sort of vibrations as you listen to music. And I think they're at a good angle, especially if you're going to be listening about three feet away from the speakers themselves. So I think in a typical desktop setup, this will probably be pointing very close to your ears. Now, the elevated speaker stands are very similar. They also have padding on the top and the bottom. And they're also going to bring up your speakers by a few inches as well. And of course, it's really going to be up to you whether or not you prefer one height over the other. Although I will say that the elevated speakers to me just look really nice. Okay, now let's test out the functionality of these speakers. To start, to turn on the speakers, all you do is press in on the volume button. And this will go into the first setting, which is going to be the RCA input. It'll give you a green light with the LED. And this is the setting that you would use for the analog or retro gaming setup. Now say you wanted to switch over to the USB or digital input, all you have to do at that point is just press on the volume button. The LED light is going to turn from green to yellow, and here I have my phone hooked up via USB-C directly into the speaker. And the transition between these is pretty fast, it takes about two seconds between the different audio modes. Next, if you wanted to try the Bluetooth one, you just need to press on the volume again, and this will give you a flashing light which will indicate that the speakers are ready to pair. And of course, if you want to cycle back through the audio inputs, all you do is then just press the volume button again. So by pressing it one more time, we'll go right back into those RCA inputs. And one thing of note is these speakers are smart. So if you have them on one certain setting, say the USB or the RCA, when you power off these speakers and then turn them back on, it'll remember the setting that you used before and go immediately to that. And of course, to power down the speakers, all you do is just press and hold the volume button for three seconds. So I do like the fact that it's a very simple user interface and that you don't have to consult the back or use a remote or anything else like that. Okay, next I wanna move into the audio testing section of the video and we're gonna start with music and we're gonna present a best case scenario first. So in this scenario, I'll be using a USB-C connection directly from a PC into the speakers. And this should give us probably the best quality audio that we can get right out of the box. In addition, we're gonna use the desktop speaker stand so it's pointed a little bit closer to our ears. And I've also moved the speakers to be about 12 inches from the back wall, which means we're not gonna get any sort of resonance issues with the bass either. In addition, I've been playing these speakers for about 40 hours to make sure that they're well broken in. 
and we're using a shotgun mic, which is going to be placed exactly where I would usually be sitting in my desktop environment. Now, the shotgun mic that I'm using is not super fancy. It's about $140. This is actually the mic that I'm using when I'm doing a lot of my voiceover when talking to the camera. So, for example, in the intro of this video, this is the shotgun mic that I was using. And last note here, I'm running these speakers at about 30% volume, so comfortably loud, but not like blasting. And we're going to start with some music testing first with your favorite song in the world. Okay, and so like I mentioned, this is a best case scenario. So I have the speakers perfectly tuned and positioned exactly where I would want them. And I did spend quite a lot of time making sure that all the volumes and inputs and outputs were correct. And as you probably heard, the audio quality here is absolutely excellent. And hopefully YouTube isn't compressing the audio of this video too much and you can hear just how good everything sounds. I feel like the beat is nice and crisp and distinct on the low end, but then I can also hear the mid range synth as well as the top end kind of high end stuff as well. So for me, this is an excellent experience, both from a music listening perspective and then as well as like playing PC games. Now, of course, this is a pretty pristine setup right here. We have a really crisp audio track and I've got everything perfectly aligned. So now what I want to do next is kind of murky that up a little bit by doing something that's a little bit less than ideal. To start, we're going to give you a reference quality sound by using my own home stereo system. And the first thing you're probably going to notice is all of the wires on the left side of my bookshelf. And I swear, usually it's not this bad. I don't have like a rat nest of wires everywhere. I usually keep it pretty clean. However, in making this whole video and having to pull out speakers and do all these other changes with the audio, I did have to basically undo everything. So needless to say, please don't judge all of the messy wires that I have under my desk. Anyway, what we're going to do now is use a reference music track with my typical stereo setup so you can get a comparison between something like this and the new desktop speakers. And just so we know what we're working with here, I'm going to walk you through each of the components of this stereo. Now, first, we're going to use my turntable because I typically will listen to vinyl in this setup. And this is my turntable right here. I bought this about a year ago after some recommendations from friends. And it's a very simple turntable, but pretty elegant. I was also drawn to the fact of having a solid wood walnut turntable because, as you'll see in a second, my amplifier also has some walnut in it as well. Anyway, it's a pretty fancy turf table, but I've been really happy with it over the past year. Now, this little thing on the left side right here is actually my full amplifier. And this thing is tiny compared to the huge amplifiers that you're probably used to with a home stereo setup. Now, this thing is called the Sprout 100 from a company called PS Audio. And this is one of the purchases that I made about five or six years ago when I was really starting to get into audio and kind of went a little nuts. To be honest, I wish I had bought this thing for $450. I bought it when it first came out, and I think it was like eight or $900 at the time. But the way I thought about it at the time and even now is that this is my forever amplifier. And this thing will do everything that I need in a home stereo system from now into the future. It has a dedicated vinyl amp that sounds really nice. But then it also has those same RCA analog inputs if I want to use it for like retro gaming. In addition, it also has USB input and Bluetooth. So essentially, this is very similar to what the powered speakers that we're reviewing today can do. But instead, this will provide all the audio and power to non-powered speakers, which is what I have in this stereo setup. So next, let's talk about the speakers themselves, which I've had for a couple years at this point as well. And I would say that these are kind of on the low end when it comes to bookshelf speakers, but they're called the Elac Debut 2.0. But I did pick these up on Amazon, but there's no way I paid that full $330 retail price. In fact, these will go on sale all the time, and I often will see them for about $225 or $250. Bucks. So if you are interested in getting speakers like this, I would strongly recommend waiting until you see a sale. And so that's going to be our full stereo setup. I'm going to have the turntable take the vinyl audio and then go directly into the amplifier, which will then push the signal into those speakers. Now for our reference audio track, we're going to use this record. It is the self-titled album from Tiger Fire Company Number no. 1. And this is actually a hip-hop group out of Vermont. And the fun fact about this group is that one of the members, the person who makes all the audio and beats, is the same person who made the music for this YouTube channel. And that's my friend Jim, who goes by the name Our Ghosts in most of his other audio tracks. And so I asked him if it would be okay if I used this audio track in our testing here later in the video. And he agreed and promised that he wasn't going to give me a copyright strike, so that's why we're going to be using it. Either way, one of the other reasons why I wanted to use this audio is because it has a good range between the low and the high end. 
but then also it's a little bit on the dirty side as well. So the beat is not going to be super crisp and clean like the last song that we were listening to. Anyway, let's go ahead and give this a test with my home stereo setup. And we're going to have a little fun with this because this one has the tendency to have a certain kind of flavor of ease. And it goes something like this. It's the inimitable duo. Think you're fat, I'm sumo. You just a fake like a spray tan, or you know who you get round kicked out like judo. Good job, get kudos. Get a pat to the back like you go. Go around and do a bad job, you might end up getting all the lead command pseudo. Maybe you could be the bag to punch and back for lunch. Already had to Captain Crunch to pass the Dutch. I'm living like I can't just want some after funds. And I don't mean to pack the guns, I'm finna get him with a low blow. Getting chilly like a swimming and I'm digging in the snow cone. Yeah, I'm really in my own zone. Get silly while I keep little kitties with a dope flow. It's the inevitable, never do better than my competitor. Better know I could get him and then I go. Gotta get him to medical. Maybe you should water sort him on an IV. Maybe think next time for you try me. Maybe think next time for you try me. Okay, so now that we got a feel for this song and what it sounds like with a reference track and a home stereo setup, now I want to move over and test with the Canto Aura speakers. And I've got a couple notes here before we begin. Number one, Jim sent over an instrumental version of this track, so that means we're not going to be dealing with the vocals, and so we can just focus on the music itself. And additionally, in keeping with the spirit of what we're doing right here and that we're not doing an optimal test, I'm not going to use these speaker stands. Instead, I'm going to put the speakers directly on the desktop table. And we're going to test with three different speaker setups. Number one will be the built-in speakers of my MacBook Pro. And these are actually pretty excellent speakers for coming from a laptop. And then next, of course, we're going to use the Canto Aura at about a 30% volume. And additionally, of note, I've also pushed these speakers back from the wall about 14 and a half inches. And this again was done to reduce any sort of bass resonance. Finally, we're also going to use a comparison speaker setup. These speakers right here are the desktop speakers I use at my home office. And I've had them for a couple years right now, and they're pretty similar to the Canto Auras that we're testing right now. Although there are some distinct differences. Number one, these are 60 watt speakers, so they're not going to get quite as loud. And as a result, I do have to turn the volume up quite a bit more in order to match the volume on the Canto Aura. So when I'm using about 30% volume on the Aura, I have to use about 40% volume on these ones here. So anyway, let's go ahead and get to the testing and I'll have everything labeled on screen. Okay, so I'm really hoping that the YouTube compression really doesn't mess with this audio too much, and I'm hoping that you can hear that there is a difference in audio quality between these three setups. Obviously, the MacBook speakers are probably going to sound the worst, they're going to lack the most bass, and then also not have as much clarity. But what I'm really hoping is that you can hear the difference between the Aura and the Audio Engine speakers. The way I would describe it is that I feel like the low end or the bass notes are really pushed further on the Audio Engine, to the point where I feel like I'm losing a little bit of that texture and quality. Meanwhile, with the Canto Aura speakers, they're not quite as bassy as the Audio Engine ones, but I can very easily hear that distinction between that rumbly and distorted bass and the kick, and then also the mid-range of the guitar and bass samples, as well as the brass up at the high end. Either way, as it stands for me, I can definitely hear that difference, and I'm hoping this will come through in the recording as well. Now, before we move over to the game testing, I did want to mention that if you do want to listen to the rest of this album, it is available on both Spotify and Apple Music. And you can also download the MP3s for free on their Bandcamp website. And if you do have a vinyl collection, they are selling their record as well for 20 bucks, which I think is pretty reasonable. Anyway, thanks to the group for letting me showcase their music, and Jim, you better not give me a copyright strike for this. Okay, now that we've got an idea of how this will sound in terms of just audio and music, now let's move over to the meat of the review when we're talking about retro gaming. Now there's a couple things I want to test with these speakers, but number one is going to be how everything sounds when using an original console hooked up via analog RCA. And in this example, we're going to use a Sega Genesis because I think that the audio drivers in this one are some of the best in the 16-bit era. A lot of people can argue that the Sega Genesis probably wasn't the highest quality, but for me, it just has a lot of nostalgia, so that's what we're going to use. In addition, we're going to do three tests as well. We're going to use these stereo speakers coming from the television itself, 
and then compare that to the Kanto Aura and how much of an upgrade it would be if you do have a CRT. And then finally, we'll also test the exact same setup, but with the audio engine speakers to see if there's a difference between the two. Okay, and I'm hoping that you can hear the audio difference between these ones as well. Now, obviously, the built-in TV speakers are going to be the worst. They're going to lack a lot of bass, but they do have a kind of nostalgic quality to them as well. And again, between the Kanto Aura and the audio engine ones, I can hear a big difference as well. And it's very similar to how it was when listening to music. The bass notes were just a little bit more muffled with the audio engine speakers, whereas on the Kanto Aura, I basically heard every little distinct feature. And I gotta be honest, this is the first time I've actually plugged any external speakers into an original console since like back in the 90s. And it's a huge night and day difference between the TV speakers I've been using and this setup here. It's really just kind of amazing how good these sound compared to the TV speakers. Let's give it a listen one more time. Okay, and the last test I want to do with these speakers is pressing them very close to the CRT television and then trying to measure the magnetic shielding. Now, I don't have a bunch of tools like a decibel meter or anything else like that, so we're just going to have to go by the sound itself. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn both of these speakers to about 80% volume, and then I'm going to put my shotgun mic right next to the speaker while the CRT is turned on. And so this measurement really isn't the amount of sound that you can hear in terms of the buzzing, but really the difference between shielded and non-shielded speakers. First, let's go ahead and take a listen to the audio engine ones, and then we'll move over to the Kanto Aura. And again, I'm hoping that you can hear that there's a huge difference between the two in terms of buzzing. I was still hearing a little bit of buzzing in my shotgun mic with the Kanto Aura, but I figured out that it was actually the sound coming from the tube of the CRT itself. When I put my ear right next to the speakers, even at 80% volume, I couldn't hear a thing, and I think that's pretty awesome. So in a nutshell, when it comes to retro gaming specifically with a CRT television, yes, the proof is in the pudding right here. Not only does the audio sound more distinct and textured than the other speakers, but we're also getting rid of that audio buzz as well. Alright, I think that's about as far in the rabbit hole that I'm able to go when it comes to audio, so I think it's time to wrap up and talk about what I like and what I don't like about the Kanto Aura speakers. Number one, I think these speakers look great. They have a nice clean appearance to them, and they also are a little bit nondescript as well. For me, this means that they're going to blend into a desktop environment very well. I also really liked the rich and balanced sound that we got from the speakers themselves. And I think that out of the box, the quality here is really great. In fact, I don't really feel the need to get a subwoofer to get those bass notes. Instead, everything just kind of comes out of the speakers and they're very distinct and clear. I also appreciate the fact that they have two different stands available for these speakers. That's kind of rare in this environment. So no matter if you're going to be using them for a desktop setup, like you're going to be playing it for gaming, or if you want to have them higher up for a more monitor-friendly experience, you can have both. And I also appreciate the fact that we have three different input methods. Not only do we have that auxiliary input, but we can also do USB-C and Bluetooth as well. So no matter what kind of setup you have, you can have it all hooked up in these speakers and swap between them as you'd like. And of course, the most distinct feature of these speakers is the fact that they work super well with CRTs. Obviously, this is a pretty niche use case and not something that the company really needed to do, but I appreciate the fact that we have an option like this if you do want to have a pristine retro gaming setup. Now, of course, nothing in life is perfect, so let's talk about some of the things that I didn't like about these speakers. 
Number one is the price here. We're looking at $350, and I know that for many people, that's probably gonna be outside of their budget. But I think if you lean more in the audio side of things, then this is probably gonna be a reasonable price point. And I think if you look at comparative speakers on the market, this is very fair for what you're getting. And finally, the other thing that I could really nitpick is the fact that it's not super bassy, especially compared to the audio engine speakers that I also own. And of course, this really comes down to personal preference. And honestly, I don't really mind that it's not super bassy, but if you are looking for something that has a really rich bass, this may not be the best fit. However, you can always add that subwoofer if you wanna to try to balance that out even more. So all things considered, do I recommend the Canto Aura speakers? And of course, as always, it's really gonna come down to you and your use case. Number one, if you're looking for a really high-end setup that give you a pristine retro gaming experience with a CRT, then yes, this is gonna be a really excellent fit. And I also think these speakers will work really well on a desktop. For example, if you're gonna be using it for music listening or watching movies or playing games. And I also think that they're balanced enough to use them in a monitor sort of setup if you're doing audio production as well. I think the best way I can describe how I feel about these speakers is the fact that I've been searching for the past couple weeks for a way to actually incorporate them into my typical audio use. For example, to create this desktop setup that we have right here, this is the best case scenario that we talked about earlier in the video. I actually had to remove a bunch of things on my desk just to make the speakers fit naturally. And unfortunately, some of those things I really need on my desk, like my MacBook. But all the same, I've been searching for a way to try to get these onto my desk so I can use them while still having all the other things I need. And while that's a very first world problem, I think it's a very good indication of how much I like these speakers. And I think when you have speakers that are so good that it makes you want to rearrange your entire desktop setup, that's a really good sign. So let me know what you think about this in the comments down below. I know this is a kind of atypical video for me because I usually just focus on the games, but I also had a lot of fun diving into the world of audio when it comes to retro gaming as well. And if you want to see more videos like this, let me know in the comments down below. I'm always on the hunt to try to find new topics to cover on the channel. Either way, as always, thank you for watching and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.